I started as a massage therapist four years ago. I grew up playing sports and I actually played collegiate baseball and I developed lots of injuries that I decided to play through which may not have been the best idea at that time. Uh, originally I'm a physical therapist but I couldn't find myself on the classical work of a physical therapy. Like Marie I found rolfing through an injury. Um, well one was a surgery and then um, you know not so great recovery from that and then the rolfing really helped. Actually I joined um, alternative healthcare class and I noticed how much I enjoyed um, this deep fascia work and the class was conducted by a rolfer. I thought I was going to find this dream job, you know, and I, I tried a lot of things. And I, and I always wanted to do more than just like make people comfortable. I wanted to help them find what it is that's uh, making them uncomfortable. You know, rolfing was actually the only thing that helped me, and I wanted to help people myself. And then I found the rolfing, the whole holistic approach, um, complete what I could offer to my clients to, for them to be able to move in a better way. And it just happened to be at a time that I was also trying to decide what I wanted to do with the rest of my life because it definitely wasn't going to be desk work. And I also missed the, the kind of income I had from when I, when I was doing business stuff. Yeah. And I felt like this could kind of allow me to have the free time that I want, allow me to work with people one-on-one, -on -one, which I really like doing, um, and allow me to have time to do the things that I like to do. I was a scientist. I do it, I see the result, I go, yeah. And I, I know people could reduce their suffering. I was a, a classroom client, and that experience was so powerful and profound that it changed my course. I mean, certainly one of the reasons I do the work is there's a precious intimacy with our clients. I saw the value in passing on something that I really derived such joy out of. We are helping people, and that's, that's a wonderful way to make a living. I consider it a privilege to both do and teach the work. Ida was a very unique teacher. She was a very special teacher because not only was she highly accomplished as an intellectual, she had a PhD in biochemistry as a woman in the 30s. She trained in Europe, she'd been to Switzerland, she'd studied, you know, uh, biochemistry and physics. So she was a uh, very sharp uh, intellect. She wanted to be able to train people to negotiate their way in a, in a very complex world. Structural integration is a technique which aims at organizing, at ordering a body. If you go back to the 70s, to the early 80s, late 60s, and that period of time, and you realize there was a great spiritual opening there. And what, what's come from that? Well, organic food, good nutrition, women's rights, civil rights, and uh, the human potential movement, which now has become complementary and alternative medicine. We are dealing with an attempt uh, to make a body a sturdier human being, to make it, to make a body more secure, more a more adequately within the field of gravity. She used gravity as her favorite metaphor, which was that if the system was better balanced in gravity, then it would uh, consume less energy in maintaining itself and there would be more juice free for expression. The human body is, is immensely complex, but she wanted to be able to give people a, a, a map, a, a, a framework, and if they worked within that framework, they would accumulate knowledge, which would then be a kind of self-instruction. So she invented the 10 session series as a teaching device and as a treatment protocol. She essentially said, follow, these, follow this protocol, do this 10 session series, and even though you don't totally understand the deep implications of what we're doing here, you'll get a good outcome. When I met her, um, I realized that you don't get a chance to, I'm going to choke up, you don't get a chance to meet a woman like this very often.
So in looking at the, the field of structural integration, and I'm looking at the Rolf Institute, what are some of the resources that the Rolf Institute has? First of all, it has a very long history. It's the organization that was founded by Dr. Rolf. It has the largest faculty with the most experience. I think we have the most diverse, just well-educated faculty with so many options. Plus, we have a great international faculty that they can choose from. It has depth. There's a lot of people here um, who have been working for decades. We really teach in a holistic, multimodal way. We really honor the students' process as well as having information we wish to make available to them. We're aiming that when people get out, they can start their practice and make a living. That's very important. <laughs> and the bottom line is we have a trademark which stands for something. Our standards of teaching are constantly being upgraded. Um, we have a membership also which is a community that you join. It's not just you get to use the word Rolfer, but you actually become part of a community. When I went to the website, I was trying to decide what school to go to. This one to me seemed like it had um, the most history, that it was uh, the most grounded, and also that it had the widest um, breadth of application, not only practice, but also uh, connected to the research community. You are exposed to so many different teachers and so many different perspectives, although there, there is the framework that is consistent mm -hmm. throughout, you, you get a real um, breadth and depth <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. of perspective. So right today we're going into the front of the core, and you can think about it as you're sitting there. What is your belief about your belly in terms of its support for a sense of being upright in gravity? Phase one is an amazing opportunity to learn the skills that you need to start learning the 10 series directly. So we do cover a variety of academic subjects in the way that a rolfer would need to learn them. So we learn anatomy, we learn physiology, we learn some kinesiology, but it's all done from the perspective of fascia and manual therapy. Piece, we don't have an anatomical middle, but we have a sensing middle of, of there's something between my front and back. We learn the tactile skills, the manual therapy basics that you need to then use in the other phases of the training to learn Dr. Rolf's work. Combining function and structure. There's a couple of passions about the phase one. One is the synergy that happens between the subjects. So you'll learn one piece in let's say the anatomy portion, and then you'll learn it in palpation, then yeah. you'll learn it in your so, own body in the rolfing movement feel, section, the and then you'll learn how to do it with a classmate partner. View myself. So all of that you're dealing with with your clients is their perception of themselves, and you can't always touch that. So there's a holding there. In phase one, we talk a lot so about the therapeutic hour. relationship, how to be with another person in a somatic setting, in a healing setting. So when you're taking the phase one and you're doing your therapeutic relationship, a lot of what you're also learning is about yourself because you learn about all those different aspects inside of yourself first so that then you can work with people from many different backgrounds and many different orientations. Belly, this can be a huge cultural sensitive place, our cultures typically don't like our bellies. People go, oh, my belly's big, I'm, it's loose. And I really like the way we approach the information from lots of different angles. Mm -hmm. Like we would, we, would, we would study the anatomy out of a book, but then we would do an experiential where we'd feel it in our bodies, and we'd mm -hmm. do a palpation. And we remember we'd build the bones, clay, yeah. Yeah. Clay. Yeah. 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 We'd, we'd build Lay. muscles out of muscles gauze on the skeleton. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And the, you, you learn, yeah. you know, in more of a linear sort of way, or you mm -hmm. learned kinesthetically, or you learned visually. There was something for every yeah. single learning style, which yeah. was really... Yeah. Nice yeah. that, I mean, a lot of schools speak about hitting every person's learning style, but they don't really do it. Right. right. They really do it here. Yeah. Right. And whatever our interests are, you know, there's, there's space for all of that. I totally agree. It was really and Several great. of us here, have, 
were together in phase one and had an amazing teacher who yeah. knew right when to shift gears. Mm -hmm. He could yeah. tell when we were cooked yeah. Yeah. and when we were ready for more. And he was able yeah, to just shift good. it and, and change it for what we, he could measure our, our layer of it. <laughs> so good. So in the phase one, there are two tracks. One is a track that is longer and is, can be for people who have no prior experience in bodywork and who are looking at doing rolfing as a change of career. The other path is shorter and is an advanced or an accelerated shorter um, phase one. And that is, it's a very, very fast paced class. And that's designed more for people who have been in some sort of manual therapy. We've had chiropractors and osteopaths take that as well as massage therapists. But I was really pleased with your ability to start differentiating between the layers. I love teaching phase two because this is the embodiment of rolfing phase of our training. So I want you to bring a little tension towards you. People learn how to touch each other in a rolfing way. There and hold. You've taken the slack out of the system. I'm gonna come in, uh, yeah. Now what if I asked you to give me just a bit of slack? People learn the 10 series. People learn about function in relationship to the 10 series. And then just let my shoulder drop through my elbow, through kind of the eye of my hand here. And most importantly, people learn how to be with themselves while working with others, how to be with a group while working with others. So we have a lot of time that we, that we put towards helping people understand their own individual ways of being and how that can relate to rolfing. And what occurs over a long period of time is we see that we're all individuals. We have this system, we have this beautiful 10 series and, move, and function that we work with. Um, but everybody does it and sees it a little bit differently. Everybody touches in a different way. Everybody has relationships in a different way. So I can't come up on your toe. Yeah. Wait a minute. This leg is back. Oh. 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 Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're getting it. Yeah. Too. I mean, we had the ten series before, but learning it at the same time as well, like to give it and to to receive at the same time, really helped to understand yeah. what was going on like I yeah. liked the 10 series when my Ralfer did with it did it with me at home but it's not the same like level that we get and we're like oh this is what's happening it was I said in phase two and I still stand by it. like it you confront your stuff in phase two mm -hmm. whatever you've got like it's going to be there and you're like and then you have to deal with it and how you deal with it and whether you're going to be able to move on or not but you, there's no hiding from yourself anymore, not in phase two. <laughs> it's there, it's there. There seemed to be shifts going on for everybody. Everybody yeah. had their days of not being happy or yeah. being really happy or just feeling like, wow, I get that. Now I, j I saw that, that thing that I didn't understand last phase or even yesterday. It's like, mm -hmm. there it is. I can feel it. It's in me now. I found myself having to look at a lot of things um, that were hard yeah. and um, and at the same time that the container kind of created that environment um, it also supported it and made space to work through it it's a space where I can I can bring that I can be myself and it's actually required yeah. that you have to go to those places in order to do this work and so for me it's it's great it's a huge letdown. I mean, letdown in that I get to let down. It's <laughs> good letdown. It's a good letdown. Do you want me to reach? Yeah, just a little bit. Less than that. In phase three, there's a big jump because phase two, we, it's embodiment. They're they're getting. Rolfed plus rolfing, and they're figuring it out. By the time you get to three, you've got to be ready to actually do the work. Make sure you're working between your hands. Mm -hmm. You've been through phase two. You know, you know, you have some idea of what you're doing, and now it's like, do you really know what you're doing? And we're going to yeah. put that to the test. Really connect between this place and kind of watch your wrist here. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's not that you're great yet, it's not that you're fantastic yet, but it's very skill-based at this point. We don't have time to sit around and process your own feelings or your own experience in terms of your body, but it's really about more about that relationship with the client, getting ready to start your practice and being comfortable in the work, deepening your strategies, your touch, and solidifying the, the concrete knowledge of this 10 set series work that you go out and you do for a few years before you really grasp it. But it's a deepening of the work at all skill levels. And you need to check your ego at the door and you need to come in here and get to work and you know, and then you're going to be supported through, you know, learning the 10 series. It gives you the opportunity to be adaptable and on and just like deal with whatever, just manage the negotiate whatever situation you're with and know that you're gonna get through it and that's just a moment and you're gonna make it through and you'll get to the other side and then there's gonna be another moment and you're gonna adapt <laughs> to that. I, I really enjoy working with clients you know and it's just like the real world is yeah. what you're going to receive you don't know so you have to be adaptable for that and um, not only working with them and finding different ways to approach them but with yourself as well as a practitioner what do you have to work on so that was huge you know and it's just like like you said checking your ego at the door and really stepping into that practitioner role and, and realizing um, what you need to do to become the best practitioner of your ability so that one, that was great they still teach you that you have to have your own body healthy and on a good way to be able to perform better and not only to influence you, but how your work is done on the client. I remember, I think it was a session two and I was trying to think of a, a, a strategy because I knew my client had, uh, just, you know, for, just for the session, but she had lower back pain. And I was like, I can free your ankles and that can help her back pain. And I didn't cure anything. And afterwards, you know, I was like, how do you feel? And she's like, my back pain's gone. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing and I feel like I do so little work now and you know I could just feel into the body and be like I don't have to work here and, and my session yeah. could be totally different from one side than the other because mm -hmm. I really feel where their body's at and, and I can work with that and, and know what to do with it to get the results that I want and it's like we're coming to an end and it's like there was times that I felt like really rushed and I was like God I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this I don't know if I'm going to be able to figure out how am I going to actually make it through phase three but here we are, and I feel good, <laughs> and I'm ready to go out into the world, and I feel like, looking back, like I just, in some ways, got a dose of reality before I actually have to confront reality. <laughs>you see people in a different way after you come here. I see the world in a different way. Like for the rest of our lives, we have one, a career that's gonna keep us entertained, um, busy, excited, and two, a wonderful network and community which we now belong so that we've got the resources all the time. Like I feel like I can reach out to any one of you anytime if I need to and you know, and vice versa. Like I'm always here, come up to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> There's a million reasons um, that people will come up with as to why they can't make this happen, and yet all of us have, and it wasn't easy. Just be prepared for a challenge, you know, because yeah. it's, not, it's, uh, it's not always rainbows and lollipops over here. So it's mentally, physically, spiritually, it's definitely emotionally been been the most difficult year of my life and I'm so humbled by the mm. experience at this point and just appreciative of all you guys and um, yeah it just makes you feel great to have gone through that process and and be able to give back you know I think that's ultimately what it's all about mm -hmm. is is giving this work back to people and, and educating others so it's it's great yeah but be prepared <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I went to the bathroom I was looking in the mirror and I was just like wow I'm so much more comfortable with myself now yeah wow. Wow. Oh, that is so yeah. cool Trevor wow yeah I don't think I've ever felt so grounded good ready in the right place mm -hmm. as I have like now finishing this like it's this is where, where I'm supposed to be and it's a great feeling If someone's contemplating a career in rolfing, making a career change to rolfing, I think it's important to understand that there are advantages and disadvantages. Well, first off, 
you'll have the joy of being self-employed. I love being a rolfer because I get to choose my own hours. I can tailor my practice, so there's a huge amount of flexibility, which can be very rewarding, but it also can be draining at times. You're going to be self-employed, and that has a whole range of um, advantages and disadvantages. There's, there's so much bookkeeping, there's so many tax laws, there's licensing issues in each and every state. But you're self-employed, you schedule your own life, and you can do this anywhere in the world and all you need is your hands. And you make good money. If you're intellectually curious and you enjoy being with people and you want to do work that makes a difference and make a good living at it, Rothing's great. You know, you're able to be in a room with your client for an hour that is just about them and you. And you know, that's a very rare event these days. There's an intensity with that. There's an intensity of human relationships. And I think it's important to know that from the beginning. It's not just about tissue or even just about movement. It's about humans. And you're really working closely with humans. So there's a, a, a way that you develop a relationship with each client that you have that really allows you to support them in their journey. It's their journey. It can be very intense, one-on-one. -on -one. You're alone, you're not in a group of a lot of people. So you have to figure out and learn and cultivate a way to keep yourself refreshed and to keep yourself re-energized. So it's wonderful to have work that, that allows you as a practitioner to develop yourself. And Rolfing certainly does that, I think, to the extent that you develop yourself, you become a better practitioner. You work with them, they change their lives. And that is so deeply satisfying to have people come back and tell you, you changed my life. Yeah, you have to just really be impassioned, uh, empathetic and compassionate about, I guess, humanity and what, what's going on for people. And also to be able to tolerate what you see and hear because it can be quite profound.